Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be on resolving a no start issue on a 1998 Toyota RAV4. This particular one uh, picked up used and I've been working out little uh, gremlins as they come up. The latest one is a no start. So let me show you guys what's happening here. The car is a stick, so I got the clutch in and nothing. Uh, battery's good. It's getting power to the starter motor. Um, the it's getting ignition. None of the fuses are blown. But uh, let me let me show you what I did find. So underneath underneath the dash here, where the clutch pedal is, you guys see that clutch switch. So this clutch pedal is supposed to engage this switch right but you can see it's not engaging the switch uh evidently there's a turn the light on here so you guys can see so there's supposed to be something that goes on here i don't know if it was a piece of rubber with some kind of a rubber insert that went in there that makes contact with that little push pin but it's it's not in the car it's missing and the way that we purchased the car is that, that that little connector that goes into the clutch switch had a little jumper wire going across the pins to make that connection. Uh, however, my daughter's going to be driving this car, and I don't want her starting this thing in gear accidentally. Uh, so I wanted to re-engage this, this switch, get it working again. Now, what I did find that would probably work pretty easy to solve this problem because it doesn't need a whole lot of... Um, pressure on this pin to get it to engage you just give it about maybe a quarter inch of of uh, pressure and and it will engage so i went into my bag of junk box of junk and found this little this little bolt right here so I'm not sure what you call this, if it's a carriage uh, carriage bolt. I'm not sure what this is called. Maybe it's a carriage bolt. But the head of it is, is smooth and it's uh, rounded. So I think this would be a good thing to push up against that nylon pin. It's not going to damage it. However, this, this is too big to fit in here. You can see it's... It won't go in there. Um, so what I thought was at first was to just drill it out. But then uh, I'm thinking, hey, you know what? It would be cool if I could just tap this. That way I can just uh, thread this in and then use a a lock wash, a lock nut on the other side to, to fasten it so it doesn't move once it's in the right position. So what I'm going to do to um, accomplish this is just use a standard tap. So what I have here is a, let's see what it is, it's a quarter inch 20 NC. So this, this little kid you can pick up at Home Depot. It's, so this is an Irwin. Uh, so I'm going to tap this real quick and then I'll go ahead and cut down that bolt because it's a little bit too long. And then fasten it using the uh, nut. So just cut it down. Then I got a little jam nut that I'm going to use and then this uh, the pedal part has been tapped see it there I'm going to go ahead and just thread it on there and then we'll just try it out all right so there it is all assembled let me show you guys here from the profile how it, how it touches that switch see how it pushes the switch and all it has to do is push a little bit and it'll work so let's test it out and see if you needed to depress the switch more, all you would have to do is just add some uh, washers on this side. Or if you left enough uh, length of on the bolt, you could just run it out a little bit and then just use the jam nut to lock it in place. And that should solve the problem. So let's try it out. Another part of the clutch switch system that can cause you problems is the switch itself. The switch is easy to remove and i would encourage you regardless of the type of vehicle that you have if you're having an intermittent starting issue attempt to 
repair the switch yourself. It is very simple and I'm going to show you how it's done on a 1998 Toyota RAV4. And what I did is I went ahead and took it out of the car, looked online for a replacement and I did find one. But for kicks I decided to open this thing up to see if I can repair this myself. And uh, to get into it, it's got three little tabs here and what you can do to get into these is use a real fine uh, flathead screwdriver and just poke it into each side lift it slightly and then try to try to get the uh, edge going I started with this middle part here because it does have a little tab that uh, you can use to to lift on so once you stick your little tool under there that little tab will lift up once you get it a little bit uh, going Put something in there like a fingernail or something and then start working the other edges till you get it out so this thing is so simple it's uh, it's just unbelievable so this is easy to repair what you can do is just once you slide it out be careful because there's a spring in here and uh, all that's involved in this part is a plastic pin with a copper contact around the edge you can see the little copper contact spins freely uh, you have a spring that rides on this bar here Oops, sorry about the shaky camera and how it works is when you depress the switch those two little contacts touch that copper ring uh, evidently what's happened is there must be some residue that's built up on these little contact points what I'm going to do to solve the problem is just give it a light sand using some 600 grit wet sandpaper and that should solve the problem and then we'll, we'll put it together real quick and, and check it to make sure it's working so let me get started with that this little spring comes out of the middle so you can just pull it off but this thing is so simple uh, it's, it's easy to repair I, I tend to like to try to take things apart that are broken to see if maybe there's an off chance that it can be fixed but as you can see I mean, there's really nothing to this so all I'm going to do here is just give it a light sand all the way around the edge you got to hold it because the ring wants to move I'm trying to eliminate these little these little darkened areas here. I'm trying to get those all flat because I think what's happened is those little uh, connectors have worn this area. And I just want to smooth it back out. And it's kind of tricky because it spins around on you as you're trying to sand it, so you got to hold it in the back. Next thing I want to get is the, the little connectors. So you don't want to apply a whole lot of force on these. You don't want to bend them. But uh, I think you can just fold the sandpaper and make it a little rigid. And then just exert some light pressure up against the little contact. And the idea is just to get that black oxidation off of there. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and push it back together and we'll test it.
we go. Zero cost repair. Uh, works. All I got to do is just reinstall it back in the car. Anyway, guys, any switch that works in the same fashion could be a brake light switch or clutch switch. Uh, you can probably make the same repair. So we got nothing without it depressed. So there we go. Successful repair. Zero cost. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Leave me some comments. Turn on your notification bell. That way, as I put out new videos that may help you guys out with uh, simple repairs, you'll be the first to know. Thanks again for watching. God bless.